Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session where you will hear how brushed and brushless motor technologies work. Learn about the application considerations for selecting the appropriate technology. Discover how to extend life, improve efficiency, and reduce noise of motors. I'd like to introduce today's presenters, Dave Gill and Eric Bartlett, both who are senior motor design engineers for Amatech Dynamic Fluid Solutions. Kevin Martin is the application engineering manager for Amatech DFS. Collectively, they have nearly 80 years of motor experience in floor care and many other industries and applications. Of course, we'd love to hear from you too. So if you have a question at any time during today's presentation, type it into the question box and hit submit. A recorded version of this webinar will be emailed to you within 24 hours. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Dave Gill to get us started on the presentation. Dave? Thank you, Christina, and welcome to all our guests. Uh, my topic today is to talk about the 6.6-inch .6 line of, uh, of VAC motors that uh, are sold under the LAM Electric brand. The LAM 5.7-inch line of vacuum motors has been the workhorse of commercial floor care, delivering power, life, and reliability to the industry for decades. Next, please. As the industry has evolved, Amatech DFS has listened to you and created the LAM 6.6-inch .6 line of tangential bypass motors to improve bearing life, brush life, battery cycle time, and noise. We offer products in 12, 24, 36, and 42 volts DC, and line voltages of 120 and 230 or 240 volts with single and two-stage fan systems. Next, please. With an eye toward energy efficiency, we created fan systems for these blowers that better match the operating orifice of commercial cleaning systems. Single-stage systems provide higher air flows. Two-stage systems provide higher vacuum or pressure. Depending on the design chosen, we can achieve up to 170 CFM, 145 inches of water lift sealed suction, and 710 peak air watts in this product line. Motors exceeding these are possible in future versions. Next, please. Overall motor fan efficiencies near 43% are achieved by fan system and motor design improvements. This is especially useful in appliances running on batteries where efficiency translates into runtime advantage. Many small steps must be combined to make the large jumping efficiency that we accomplished with the 6.6 inch motors. Much of it is in eliminating losses that sap performance and consume energy. Next, please. In the fan system, we use coated fans. This coating accomplishes a couple things. It reduces skin friction between the air and the blade surfaces, reducing losses. It also helps seal any tiny gaps between the blades and the fan discs and shrouds that can cause leaks and losses. As a bonus, it also protects from corrosion from soapy chemicals in the air as it passes through the fans. The fans have extruded eyes. We put PTFE seals in the eyes of the shells to create seals against these extruded eyes to prevent a leakage at the fan eye. A compound taper for the fan itself increases efficiency, better matching the inlet and exhaust areas of the fans. The tapered stationary and inner shells help do the same thing. Next, please. The horn bracket of the motor has a smooth, constant rate of expansion volute to help reduce turbulent losses as the air is routed to exit. Next, please. The motor side is driven by our Galaxy lamination set. 
Our traditional three inch lamination set used in our 5.7 line of motors is a versatile workhorse designed to give good performance in both drive and air moving applications. But when our designers sat down to create the Galaxy lamination, they focused on air moving applications. The rotor's a little smaller, designed for higher speed, which reduces windage losses. It was designed with higher speeds and lower torques in mind. Subtle design changes in the slots improve the magnetic circuit. We also made them thinner and with a higher silicon steel grade, both of which help reduce electrical losses. The overall size and weight are lower as well. Next, please. We also focused on life and reliability. Reliability is key in the field, especially in wet pickup applications. Bearing life is crucial. For many years, lamb bypass motors have featured our patented air seal protection to improve bearing life. In designing the 6.6 motors, we improved on this design with new features. Next, please. We isolated the working air, carrying moisture and soap from the bearing system. We introduced a seal and increased the distance between the seal and the bearing and put the cooling fan in between to act as a slinger and as a barrier. Next, please. Testing in our suds-laden environment has demonstrated the effectiveness of this design. With the new system, bearing life now exceeds brush life. Next, please. Carbon brush life has been improved by the addition of the patented Eternity brush system. Proper coated carbons contribute to the efficiency improvement in, in the motor. The curved brushes give nearly double the usable carbon length within the footprint of the motor. Teflon brush guides keep the brushes gliding smoothly for a long life. Brush life of from 1,500 to 3,000 hours in line voltage motors and up to 5,000 hours in low voltage motors is possible depending on power level and voltage. Next, please. Finally, the compact motor design helps reduce vibration and the full motor cover helps uh, contain motor noise, resulting in a reduction of several dB over similarly powered 5.7 inch models. An added noise and carbon dust filter cover is also available. Next, please. If you like the features of the LAM 6.6 inch line, check out its big brother, the LAM 8.4 inch motor line with the same design features, but at a higher performance level. If you're interested in even longer motor life or more control features in the 6.6 package, Eric Bartlett will next discuss some exciting new products with you. Eric? Uh, thank you, Dave. I would now like to introduce you to our brushless DC 6.6 .6 family of blowers. Uh, the brushless DC 6.6 .6 inch models combine beneficial features of our low volt DC Windjammer product line and the 6.6 .6 inch fan system from our LAM brushed product line. We are developing DC blowers at various voltages for battery run products for scrubbers and other markets. Next, please. Using brushless technology extends the life limit from the brushes to the bearings, significantly increasing the life of the blower. Controllers are designed for various battery voltage voltages and allow speed control and tack out options. Next, please. Brushless means that the life limiting component in the blower is the bearings instead of the brushes. Models that typically last 1,000 to 5,000 hours in brushed products can last 10,000 to 20,000 hours and beyond in brushless products. Next. 
To date, prototypes have been built and tested in 24 volt, 36 volt, and 42 volt versions. Controllers are also designed such that 12 volt and 48 volt versions can also be developed. Next, please. <clears throat> One moment. Brushless DC 6.6 inch controllers have a number of features that allow flexibility for various applications. The zero to 10 volt speed control lead can be connected to a low current DC signal in the unit to adjust the speed. Alternatively, the board mounted potentiometer can be adjusted for speed control or simply set to the maximum setting to always run at full voltage. Speeds can be monitored via the tachometer output. Finally, the circuit board may be silicon coated for use in wet applications such as scrubbers and extractors. Next, please. The brushless DC 6.6 .6 blowers feature all of the benefits of the LAM 6.6 single and two stage fan systems. As Dave mentioned, benefits include higher efficiency that leads to extended battery cycle time, coatings on metal components for improved efficiency through elimination of losses as well as corrosion protection, and lower noise. Next. The brushless 6.6 models also incorporate the relocation of the fan side bearing to the motor compartment as in the LAM 6.6 inch models for bearing protection in wet applications. Next, please. The moisture and detergent laden working air is sealed and isolated from the bearing system using the dynamic axial seal from the LAM 6.6 inch design. Next slide, please. Well, now I'll introduce you to Kevin Martin, our applications manager. Kevin will go into more detail about our brushless products. And Thanks, Eric. Oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. Thanks, Eric. Um, you know, since most applications really start with air performance, I thought it might be important to spend just a few moments talking about testing differences that are generally found between traditional traditional series universal motors and traditional blowers, um, even though it is the same information. Uh, the series universal motors you may be more familiar with are typically tested for performance using a box test. This is a well-established standard de designed by the ASTM uh, many years ago, uh, and it is indicated by the t data shown on the top part of the slide. Uh, you can see it's all based on orifices uh, at a certain size, and then they measure air performance as those orifices are changed on the box. Uh, most blowers, as they're typically called when they're brushless, even though they all work the same, are usually tested in a laminar flow system. Um, the results are very close and, and can be used pretty much interchangeably for most cases. As you can see in the laminar flow system, we typically then just plot the vacuum versus flow. Those are the two highlighted yellow columns on the box test. We just basically plot those differently than they used to see in on the box test graphs. You can see vacuum or pressure is usually plotted on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis is in the flow. Now, the only difference as you start talking about these blowers and whether they're series universal or brushless is that with a brushed motor, you basically, you basically operate on the curve. So that means, uh, anything on that dark blue line on the bottom chart is where the blower will operate based on what the uh, effective orifice is. Whereas on a brushless product, because you have speed control, you can now operate anywhere in the shaded blue area. So anywhere below, below the curve is now an operating point that can be hit with most brushless products. Next. Uh, since we're talking about speed control, and that is one of the major differences, um, let's take a moment to just explain some of the ways we can do that. We typically have three options, or I guess four, you could say. 
One is a zero to 10 low voltage DC signal is used. A second option is PWM signal can be used. And on that means if you typically have a, an amplitude of say 12 volts, as this example shows, when you give it a PWM signal of a 25% duty cycle of a 12 volt signal, you can see you're basically getting 25% of that. So you're getting three volts is your effective DC signal out to control the speed. As you look down then, then 50% is six volts, 75%, nine volts, et cetera. So that's how a PWM signal works. It's all based on duty cycle and amplitude. We also offer many products for the 4 to 20 milliamp is another um, long established speed control method for controlling motors over the years. Then also many brush products offer a mechanical speed control method. By that we mean there is an internal potentiometer that can be used to set the speed once the line voltage is applied. So that then you set that speed one time and every time the product is cycled on and off, it will ramp up to the speed set by the potentiometer. Another nice feature is now that we have control over the motor speed, we also have control over acceleration where you can, with programming of a digital controller, you can control how quickly it gets up to a certain speed. And those are just some of the other options now that you've never had with a series universal motor. Thank you, next. Um, again, on to the speed control section. Another difference is we now have open loop or closed loop speed control. All series universal motors are basically open loop, which means the speed of the motor is based on the load applied to the fan system or the motor, basically. We refer to this as the effective orifice of the motor. So it will run to on that curve to whatever that effective orifice line crosses. On a brushless blower though, we can also set these up as open loop so they can act like, like a series universal motor, or we can now go to a closed loop solution. A closed loop basically means you're regulating the fan speed. Think of this as a cruise control on your automobile. When you set the cruise at say 60 miles an hour, if you're a nice slow driver, I suppose, it will maintain that speed whether you're going up a hill, down a hill, or on a flat surface. That is pretty much what a closed loop speed control does as a blower. It will set it at a certain speed, say 18,000 RPM, and it'll run at that speed regardless of the load on the fan system. Um, think of this as a difference is, again, on a series universal, when you put your hand over the nozzle or your nozzle gets clogged up, you can hear the motor ramp up to speed very quickly and you get that very high whine. That's because there is no longer any load on the system. So the motor is running at its maximum speed. You won't get that when you go to a closed loop. When you put your hand over a closed loop system, it will maintain the same RPM of the motor regardless. Uh, next. Um, one more thing on the speed control, since it is one of the large differences between brushed and brushless motors, not only can we set that, what our digital controllers allow us to do very distinct steps with our speed control. If you look at the example on the upper left graph, you can see that as zero to basically four and a half to 4.8 volts are applied, the motor is effectively off. But on this graph, as soon as five volts is applied, the motor comes on and it'll spin at 4,000 RPM. And then if you take another step on the graph, say you apply seven volts, jump all the way to the top. If you move that line across, you will see that now it will spin at 16,000 RPM. Again, that you can only do this because you have a digital controller and you are controlling the speed of the motor in firmware on the blower. Uh, another thing to take into consideration is as you close the orifice, most blowers are basically controlled somewhat, they have a maximum current that they can hit because of the power limitation set within the controller. So that in this case, if you look at the chart on the bottom right, you will see the purple line where it's a very small effective orifice uh, of the 0.312, and you can see it hits a max speed of basically, I don't know, estimate that of 
22 or 23,000 RPM. But as you open up that effective orifice and get move more air, thus doing more work at say the green line, which is no, um, no orifice at all, it's doing the most amount of work it can do, moving the most air. So that takes the most power, which takes the most current. So because we're current limited, we've now lowered our top end speed to say 18,000 RPM on the graph. Now also though, we can do things like we can calibrate a blower, which basically means we can control the slope of the speed response, which is the light blue line on the bottom graph. So now then, you have a nice linear approach to your speed command, all the way from your top speed down to your bottom speed, at from in this case from zero to two volts you'll get a linear response to speed based on your speed command now what next thanks christina now why all that is important is um speed command really can be used to control power um, if you look at the speed control options you can see that you really don't have one on a series universal motor sure you can do some speed control with perhaps using a very active chop the line voltage but it's really not true speed command like you get on the bldc's um, now with that speed command though like i said it's really controlling power let's say you want to conserve your battery life which is all about power drain right so if you're picking up something that is, say, dry, that doesn't take as much vacuum to pick up, you can slow the speed down to the blower, use less current, make your battery last longer. Then with the speed command, as you go to something harder to pick up and you need more vacuum, you can increase the speed of the blower, still provide a very effective cleaning solution this way, but it will take more battery, more power, which will make take more battery life. So to truly, truly optimize the power and the life of the battery, you need to optimize the power being used by the blower. So you do not want the blower to operate at max power all the time, perhaps. And this is one of the advantages of a brushless blower design. Um, another one is, let's talk about life in your application. As the guys mentioned, a series universal motor typically lasts 5,000 to 3,000 hours. Sure, some of our low voltage, low power DC ones can go longer, but most life is around that range. Uh, when it, using a BLDC product though, uh, because there aren't any brushes or, or other wear items, they typically can last 10,000 to 20,000 hours. Some applications even can go more depending on power requirements. So you're getting a lot longer life to your, to your blower, no brushes are changed, no commutators are wear out. It just works all the time. Um, another consideration option uh, when you're looking at different motor types is inrush current. Um, the BLDC does ha typically have a higher inrush current because they have a controller, their AC, they have a cap bank that they use as part of their bridge rectifier to convert the power. So it, there's a very high spike of inrush current uh, that has to be there to fill up the caps, to charge up all the cap passers at first. Now it's a very short time frame, but there is a large inrush current. Now when you're designing up front, that's fine. You just design your system with the proper types of fusing, and this does not normally present much of a problem. But if you are taking an existing design that may have a certain type of fuse or power requirements, and all of a sudden you put in a BLDC blower that the inrush current is much higher, you may blow your fuses, so you need to keep that into consideration. On the power front, another advantage of a brushless is we can offer universal voltage designs. So basically, if you have a universal blower, BLDC blower, it could operate from a line voltage anywhere from 108 to 264 volts with the same air performance. This would allow you then to use that motor worldwide, depending on what the input voltage is, and you can guarantee your customers that they will get the same air performance. This can help you reduce skews in your manufacturing and spare parts, and it just everybody would you know prefer to deal with less parts in their product in and around the world for repair and servicing. So this is certainly one of the big advantages of a BLDC versus the Series Universal, which are really designed 
uh, when you wind, you know, pick the windings for the motor, you design it for a spot voltage, whether that be a low voltage DC or 120 or 200 volts AC. You typically design for one voltage, uh, and there's nothing much you can do about it. Um, now, having said all that, some of those things are really nice, but they do come at a price, which is basically a BLDC is a typically a higher cost product than a series universal driven motor. Uh, there's just more working parts. Um, as far as the controller goes, which adds cost and the electronics. Um, so typically they are higher cost, but so this is part of the design considerations. If you want the longer life, you want the speed control, you want that variability of power, you know, there are always design trade-offs. Now, a third thing, to, or another thing to, I shouldn't say a third, another thing to talk about is airflow paths of the working air. On a series universal motor, when you think of a through flow on a series universal motor, if you're familiar with that term, typically that air path is all axial. Um, it's, but on a BLDC, because of the controller has to be there, you have to have a controller somehow, uh, they're basically all tangential blowers. So even a through flow on a BLDC product is typically a tangential airflow, whether that be a peripheral or a straight tangential out of horn, the air path has to turn and make a 90 degree turn basically to get past the controller. So again, not necessarily a major point when you're designing up front, but it is something that to keep in mind if you're trying to replace a series universal through flow with a BLDC product in the future for upgrades or other things to consider. Um, so basically, those are some of the major design points. We can certainly uh, answer any questions you have. Oh, and my last point, I did go back there. We, we don't need it. But also, if you're working in a very clean environment, my last point on my slide I forgot about is because there are no carbon brushes, um, brushless BLDC products are much cleaner and better used for sterile and clean room environments because they're not polluting the in air with any carbon brush. So that's often used in many hospital environments. They want brushless just for that reason, to keep the air clean. Um, and having said that, that's really all I have. Uh, I'd like to turn it back to Christina now, if there are any questions out there that we could answer for anybody. Uh, we can certainly uh, get one of our engineers here to take a look and see what you have. Thank you for joining. All right, great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Uh, the first looks like it's going to go to Dave, and that is, uh, can I get 6.6 six motors with inlet tubes? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we have two sizes of inlet tubes. The uh, most common is a two-inch inlet tube. That's on the fan shell at the bottom. Uh, and we also have a smaller one and a half inch inlet tube that's available. So talk to your uh, to your sales contact and they can uh, uh, work with engineering to get you the right option there. Great. Another question is, um, are non-loading fans available in your 6.6 product line? And that goes to Eric. Uh, yes, and the answer is yes. Uh, we do have non-loading fan options that are designed for some of our cyclonic applications where we're trying to shed dirt and dust and so forth uh, off of the off of those fans and they have uh, specialized coatings and the blade design is a little different so that it sheds the, those unwanted uh, buildups uh, more quickly. It does have a, a slight uh, effect on the efficiency, detrimental effect, but it's it's not that much. Uh, so yes, those those are available, and again, you know, work with your uh, with our salespeople, and we can uh, we can come up with a solution for you. All right, great. Uh, another question: Do you offer stainless steel parts to your fans for added protection against rusting? Uh, yeah, I guess I could take that one. Uh, most of our designs are typically using, you know standard tempered seal designs but yes we offer uh, in very dirty poor environments where you could do a lot of water and wash down stainless steel is available typically for the bearings and the shafts um, and we also can offer other protection coatings on the fan system and shells 
um, as well. But uh, yeah, stainless steel is generally available as a custom customization for almost all of our products. All right, a couple more questions here. Uh, do you offer help with EMI issues? Uh, I can take that one. Uh, yes, we do have uh, a lab that uh, we can we can test for uh, electromagnetic interference and uh, uh, through the uh, conducted and radiated ranges uh, of frequency. And uh, our lab is a um, pre-compliant. We we provide pre-compliant data. That is to say that we're not certified for uh, actually uh, you know for for actually certifying you for that type of um, analysis, but we certainly have the capability to get you um, what you need before you can uh, do your in-unit testing. And uh, so it, 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 it can be very helpful. Along those lines also, we have, again, non-certified, we have a, a, a full sound lab as well where we could do uh, noise measurements to help you identify any noise in your systems. We can often bring in different systems, not just the motor, but off of the whole system, put it in our sound lab and help help you as a service to identify where you are getting um, audio noise and if we can do anything to help your design to minimize that noise as well. All right, great. Um, also, um, I have a low volt 6.6 motor and the brushes aren't curved. Why is that? Well, that's a good observation. The uh, the Curved brushes are on the line voltage motors, the uh, the 120 and 230 volt motors. Uh, the reason is is basically um, the suppliers that we have. We have a the supplier who makes the uh, the curved brushes, who's developed that tooling and that technique, doesn't really have grades that do a good job for us in low voltage. And cons and uh, conversely, the folks that make the uh, the, the nice low voltage grades that give us long life uh, have not been interested in trying to make the curved brushes, but uh, we typically get very good life on the low voltage motors. It's, it's in the same ballpark as the uh, line voltage motors. So uh, that really isn't a detriment uh, to the customer. So, but yeah, there is a difference there. Okay, a couple more questions here. Uh, what is the smallest brushless blower in your product line today? Um, I guess I'll jump in on this one. We actually have, um, we measure most of our blowers, as you know, if you may have known our um, product bulletins um, by size of basically of the fan system. We have as far as small as like two and a half inch fans on some of the brushless products up to uh, a 12.3 inch fan and on the really large, very um, high voltage, high power system. So we have the whole range from a, basically a, a three inch to a 14 inch blowers in the Brussels product line today. Uh, you know, if you didn't know, like when you hear a LAM 5.7 or LAM 6.6, um, so this is basically the measure that same similar ways, even though it's not exactly all the same. Uh, but so we have a full range of products from, like I said, the basically two and a half to 14 inches. Great, I do have a couple more questions, but if you'd like to ask a question today, just simply type it into the question box and hit submit. Um, I do have a couple more questions here. Um, are brushless service, or brushes serviceable? Yeah, the uh, the 6.6 and I believe the, uh, the low voltage motors both have uh, brush service kits available. Now these aren't uh, cartridges like you might be used to seeing with uh, a number of our 5.7 or 7.2 inch motors. These are some carbons and uh, some crimps. You have to do a little bit of work. You have to open up the motor and, and crimp the brushes on. Uh, but they are serviceable. Okay. Uh, what are the electrical and static rounding options in 6.6 six models? I can take that one. Uh, yeah, we, you can, there's a place for a, a lead to be attached in on the 6.6s six for both electrical grounding of the motor and also static ground. 
So if you need either one of those options, uh, we, we again work with your sales team and uh, we'll work together with, uh, they'll work with engineering to, uh, to give you what you need. All right, and it looks like this is the last question for the today, and that is how is efficiency calculated? Um, okay, well, I guess I can answer. Typically on, on all of our products, uh, we measure efficiency as air watts, which is a way to measure air power um, in, over input watts, uh, line power, or you know the input voltage power, whether it's DC or AC, I guess. So we do the calculations of the motor has an efficiency and the fan system has an efficiency. So when you're designing a product, both of those efficiencies are modified together to basically get your overall efficiency. And because all that math is kind of hard to figure out, we just use the air watts over input watts to come up with overall blower slash motor efficiency. Of course, if there are any questions about that, you know, there are explanations out there what air watts are and how they're calculated. Um, easily available out on the internet, or you can certainly ask any of our uh, sales or engineers and, and we can explain it further. Yeah, well, Kevin, I just may add that uh, the, the AirWatt calculation is, is explained in uh, ASTM 558, which is a vacuum cleaner uh, a spec for, for doing vac performance, and it defines uh, how you calculate the AirWatts. It's basically a product of, uh, of vacuum and airflow at uh, at a given performance point divided you know then with all of the units taken care of uh, but it, it's funny if you go through all that it actually is uh, a uh, uh, the units are energy for when you multiply uh, pressure times flow so but that that's how you calculate air watts in the first place is you look at uh, ASTM 558 and if I could add just one more thing, you can also, we can uh, measure uh, motor only efficiency using a speed torque test. And uh, so therefore you can, uh, Kevin mentioned that you multiply the motor efficiency by the fan efficiency to get the overall efficiency. So you can get two of those three by doing the motor only through the speed torque test. And then the overall by by the uh, uh, input watts, uh, well, the, uh, the uh, uh, air watts versus the input watts and then back out the uh, fan system efficiency okay thank you so much that concludes today's presentation if you'd like to talk to a sales engineer you can schedule an appointment at the url that's listed and shown on the screen thank you so much goodbye